Today I want to talk a little bit about inspecting a school bus that's being converted into say an RV, which is what most people following my channel are probably looking at. I won't get into the whole debate of when a bus stops being a commercial vehicle and starts being an RV and some of the commercial regulations no longer apply. That's kind of a gray area. It's widely debated on Facebook and I could give you a lecture on religion and politics that would generate less flack than getting into that. The point I want to make is that these regulations exist for commercial vehicles to meet a minimum safety standard. And just because your bus is no longer registered or being operated commercially, that bus is still the same bus as it was when it was a commercial vehicle on the road. And so I think all drivers of any type of bus should still do some of these inspections and make sure that their bus is in safe working order to be on the road. If nothing else, if, if your brakes fail on your bus and you wipe out a minivan full of kids on their way to daycare, nobody wants to be in that situation. And by simply doing these inspections and making sure your bus is safe, that, that's a good thing to do. And on a similar level, any peace officer can stop you. And if your vehicle is not safe to be on the road, they can stop you and tell you, you can't drive this thing on public roads anymore until you fix your brakes. I mean, you wouldn't knowingly get in a passenger car with no brakes and take off to go to the grocery store. It's not safe and you wouldn't do it. And you should really have even more due diligence when it comes to operating a 26 or 30,000 pound bus. One of my favorite channels on YouTube for a uh, bus conversion, the guy was months into his conversion on the road with it and was having some air leakage problems on his bus and started digging into it to fix some. And as he learned more about his brake system, he acknowledged right on YouTube, like he was embarrassed that he operated his bus in such an unsafe manner for so long. And it's not that he intended to be negligent about it or he just didn't know better. And once he knew better, he felt really bad that, you know, oh my God, something terrible could have happened. And he was very fortunate that it didn't. Because I've had a CDL for 15 years and I've owned a party bus fleet that was commercially operated across state lines and all the federal regulations applied to me for so long, I, I want to talk about the federal regulations, even though they may not apply to you, but I'm going to talk about what those regulations are and why I still do them on my bus. And these regulations are defined in 49 CFR 396.3, 396.11, and 396.17 if you want to go look them up. It's officially the first day of spring. So here in Iowa, that means it's not completely miserable. It's uh, mid 50s and a little bit breezy, but at least the sun is shining. It's a decent enough day to come out and work on the bus a little bit. So there's several different types of inspections on a bus uh, that you should be aware of. For those of you new to the channel, I ran a party bus company that operated exclusively converted school buses for several years. So I've done the commercial side of the house and this bus obviously is going to be an RV. So with the commercial types of inspections, there's pretty much three types of inspections we deal with on a fairly regular basis. The first one is the driver's pre-trip uh, inspection, which is fairly small, quick. It's a, it's a walk around, check for the most obvious safety issues. And that ideally should be done uh, every time you start the bus or every time you have a driver change. In reality, it doesn't happen nearly that often, even though it's supposed to by law for a commercial vehicle. The second type of inspection we deal with a lot uh, with the commercial fleet is when drivers are going to get their CDL. They're required to do a, an inspection of the vehicle. That is the very similar to the driver's pre-trip walk around, but it's uh, it's a lot longer. There's a lot of uh, different things that you have to say in specifically the right order and in the right way to pass the examination. I don't think anybody actually does that level of an inspection on their vehicle every time. Uh, it's very detailed and in-depth. And also when you're doing the walk around, you don't actually have to inspect the item. You just have to point at uh, the correct part of the bus and say the right things. So it's one of those memorization tricks and memorization exams that's not extremely practical. And the last inspection we deal with on a regular basis, it's called the annual inspection. And the annual inspection is just that it has to be done annually. There are criteria in the federal code that stipulate who can sign off on the inspection with the years of experience and a couple other factors uh, required in there. And those go on a form very similar to what I'll show you. So today I'm going to walk you through the uh, both the annual inspection as well as the driver's daily pre-trip and, and how I do those. Like I said, this is not a commercial vehicle anymore. This is registered as an RV. It's insured as an RV and I'm not required required to do these. However, I still think it's a good idea for uh, drivers of, of schoolies to regularly do an inspection on their bus, both a quick one more frequently and a more thorough one 
at least annually. Even though you're not required by federal law to do that anymore, it's a good idea to know that your bus is operating safely and soundly. And if you're not comfortable with all the mechanics of it, you know, doing just a daily pre-trip walk around is pretty easy. There's some pretty obvious things to look for. And then once a year, take a bus to a, a shop and ask them for a DOT annual inspection. It runs about 100 to $150 at most shops, and, and they will do the annual and tell you, you know, what on the bus is, is safe or not safe and in immediate need of repair. So that's always an option for you too. And I will add too that checking a lot of these things is a good thing to do. Uh, if you're looking at buying a bus before you buy it, these are all good inspection items to do to make sure that the bus you are buying is in uh, good shape. Okay, so these are the two forms we're gonna go uh, with. Um, this first one here on the left is the annual inspection report. This is a generic form you can download right off the internet. And I have highlighted in blue on this, the items that are required in federal code for the driver's daily walk around. Like I said that this form uh, is required to be done annually and must uh, remain with the bus or in the files of the motor carrier if they fill out the small little sticker and put it on the bus. The second one here is more of a checklist that I downloaded off the internet, and this thing is like four or five pages long. It's very detailed, and this is all of the stuff that you're required to go through for a CDL pre-trip exam. Um, and so this is what we're going to mostly focus on. I'm going to do the full-blown inspection because everything in here is contained within here. Apologies for the wind noise. I'll get back inside in just a second. Um, but as you may or may not know, my bus is a 2006 International, and this has the DT-466E engine and an Allison 3000 transmission. So the very first thing on our list uh, starts to cover engine compartment, and topic number one in here is oil level. So to check the oil on the bus, uh, on this particular engine, this is on the driver's side of the bus, and that is this yellow one right here. And we're going to twist this knob a little bit to loosen the plunger, pull this out. And we're going to look at the setting on here, and it looks like it's filled to operating range, but we'll wipe this off with a towel. Reinsert the dipstick all the way snug, pull it out and check. And we are right within the operating range. Our oil is good. You notice the oil is black color. It is not, there, there's no burnt smell to it. There's no particles in there. It doesn't look like it's burnt. So our oil is in good enough shape. Then we will just put that dipstick back in there and twist this around until it's snug and, and they're good and solid. Okay, that takes care of number one. Number two is the coolant level. Coolant level is filled at our reservoir here. And what we're looking for here is that our coolant level is above the add line, which is the lower yellow one, and below the max line, which is the top. So normally you wanna keep this filled to the max line. Uh, this system is a little bit low on coolant, so I could add a little bit more in there and that'd be fine. We're also checking as part of this inspection that the cap is on snugly and securely and is in good shape. It's not cracked or broken, uh, indicating that it may have failed. Uh, this is a pressure relieving cap, which means if the coolant system gets too hot, starts to boil over, this will allow the steam to escape out of the coolant system uh, without it exploding. Okay, up next, number three, power steering. We need to make sure that the level is between the add and full. We must say that this, it is gear powered and working properly and it's not leaking and securely mounted. So our power steering on this bus, still on the driver's side, is this reservoir right here. It's a little hard to see in the camera, but we wanna make sure that we are between the minimum and maximum line. Our power steering pump is gear driven on this. Uh, that's down in the gear somewhere. I'm not gonna dig down in there. You'd only need to say that for a CDL exam, uh, but that this thing is securely mounted and it is not leaking and we make sure our cap is on tight as well. Number four, water pump. We need to say that it is, we need to check that the water pump is securely mounted, the bolts are tight and it's not leaking. And we need to check that the belt is not cracked or frayed and the tension is between one half and three quarters of an inch. So to really check that, we're gonna go around to the passenger side of the bus. Okay, so over here for the water pump, that is one of the items down in there. Can't really get the camera in, but we can check that the belt has good tension. There is not more than one half inch of play and that the belt is not cracked or frayed. The belt is in good shape. Now, on a, on a similar manner, this bus has a separate belt for our air conditioning system. And you can see that this belt is uh, a part of the, one of the bands on it is broken off. Um, so that would be a damaged belt and this belt does not pass inspection. So uh, I do need to get a new belt for this bus. That's just for the air conditioners. The main belt uh, that drives, you know, our alternator, water pump and the like uh, is all in good shape. 
Okay, number four, the alternator. It's securely mounted, the bolts are tight, the wire is secured into the back of the alternator, and the belt is not frayed, cracked, and the tension is between one half and one quarter. So our alternator on this bus is right up front here, right below my air conditioners. Um, we can see that it is tightly mounted. It's not loose, moving around. The bolts are tight. The wires on the back of it are connected securely. And because this is the same belt as the water pump, we've already checked that and we know that the belt is good. Up next, the air compressor. We need to make sure it's secure the engine. The bolts are tight, the hoses are secure and not leaking. We must say that the, uh, the air compressor is belt driven and that it works properly. And this belt must be, again, not cracked, not frayed. And the tension must be between one half and three quarters inch. So my air compressor on this bus is on the driver's side. So we'll go back over there. So back over here on the driver's side, the air compressor on this bus is a little hard to get at. It's easier to see from underneath, but I'm not ready to crawl underneath the bus yet. Uh, but it is right down in there. Uh, this up here is my uh, low pressure fuel pump and the air compressor is down here. So this particular one is actually gear driven, not belt driven like my checklist says, but we can tell that all of the hoses that it's securely mounted the engine it's bolted tight the hoses are connected solid and it's not leaking uh, later in the video when we start the bus we'll actually do a, a full air brake system check and check for weeks then and make sure it's building air properly but we'll do that later all right number seven on the engine compartment checklist for the cdl is leaks so we need to check under the vehicle for oil puddles and then check the bottom of the motor for leaks uh, we will do that here now so looking underneath the bus it would appear that I do have a small oil leak. I keep this oil catch underneath here. One, it's just a good place to store it out of the way, but two, if it does start leaking, it makes less of a mess on my floor. Uh, but you can see from this drain hose here, uh, there is a little bit of oil coming down out of that. I know that this bus has a very small leak front main. Uh, there's a common misconception with diesel engines in that people say all diesels leak oil. Well, a lot of diesels leak oil, but they shouldn't. A properly maintained engine should not leak at all. But I know that this particular bus does have a small oil leak on it, and that's something I will be addressing later on. Unfortunately, where it's leaking is at a very difficult spot to get to. It requires removing a lot of engine components, which is not something I'm comfortable doing. I will have my mechanic do that work, but it's a significant project. It's gonna be about 25, 30 hours of labor for an experienced mechanic to do that. So because the leak is very, very small, very slight, we are going to let it go for the time being. This technically would fail an inspection because of this oil leak. All right, next on our checklist, number eight, hoses. We need to check the hoses for splits and cuts and make sure that all the clamps are tight and check the hoses for leaks. So this is mostly talking about coolant hoses. I did a whole, I did a couple of videos earlier on about uh, changing out all the hoses on my coolant system. So go check those videos out if you're curious about that. But we can see that all the clamps are tight and these are all brand new hoses. So they should definitely not be cracked or leaking yet, but we're gonna check them over. So this is the main hose that goes from my coolant reservoir down underneath the bus to the other side. And then up here are a couple of the coolant hoses that go into the cab for the heating system. And these, again, brand new, they're not cracked or frayed, not leaking, and the clamps are all tight. And we'll go check them on the other side as well. Uh, before we do that though, we'll check these quick little bleeder lines. And these are also in good shape. Over on the passenger side, we have the hose coming up from the water pump into our shutoff valves for the heaters. These, the clamps are all tight. Everything looks good, no leaks. And also up here, our bleeder lines all look good as well. All right, on the front truck axle, the steering box, we need to make sure that the steering box is secure, the bolts are tight, and it is not leaking. And then number 10, the steering box hoses, and number 11, the steering linkage. So that is back over on the driver's side. This here is our steering box. This is where the rod comes in from the steering wheel. And we can see that this is securely mounted, bolts are all tight, hoses are all clamped tight, and it is not leaking. For the steering linkage, this is the link that comes down from the steering box to our wheel. And we again make sure that these bolts are all tight, everything is snug, not leaking, not cracked. The tie arm, which you can kind of see down there, goes across the bus to the air wheel, which we'll go check. Again, there's our tie arm coming over and across. Kind of see it down there behind the brakes. Okay, the next couple items on the list requires us to crawl underneath the bus. This is where having a creeper comes in handy, so we will do this next. But we are going to be looking at our springs, our U-bolts, our spring mounts, our shock absorbers, and, but, and then we'll start getting into the brake system. Okay, so underneath the bus here, we're uh, right behind the uh, passenger door looking towards the front of the bus. 
Up here you can see our shock absorbers. Those look in pretty good shape. They are tightly bolted on. There's another one on the other side. A little difficult to see. And we'll check the springs in the back. We also will check our U-bolts under here. While we're under here and up front, we'll take a look at our transmission. Again, checking for wires and hoses that are frayed, damaged, leaking, anything that looks loose. And we're also looking for missing bolts and everything under here for the transmission. Looks good. All right, crawling back. I'm going to start going a little bit out of order because it's a pain in the butt underneath this bus. Uh, in editing, I may try to correspond these things back together, but for now, uh, bear with me. So these are our U-bolts here. Again, we're looking for leaks. These need to be greased fairly regularly. I do that during my annual maintenance, uh, but we're looking for anything that looks broken or anything that looks like it's leaking, and these all look good the whole length of our drive shaft. While we're under here, we'll check out the air tank. Make sure our connections are all snug and that nothing appears to be leaking. We'll check for air leaks later on, but we want to make sure that the tank is in good condition and is not rusting out. The hoses are all uh, good. I did another video earlier where I talked about the changing out the uh, drain plugs and putting this uh, service fitting on there. Go back and check that video out if you're interested. All right, as we move our way back, we're again checking the U-bolts on the drive shaft. We're checking our exhaust tailpipe for any signs of rust through, broken spots. I apologize for the poor lighting under here. While we're under here, we're also looking at our frame and our all of our cross members. We're looking for any signs of rust or bowed, cracked, bent frame members that would indicate a structural failure and these all look good. In the back here we're again continuing to check our drive shaft. We're looking at our exhaust and we're looking at our rear differential. Again looking for any signs of leaks and that all of these hoses are in good shape. They're not cracked, frayed, leaking. Crawling under the back of the bus now looking forward towards our rear axle. These right here are air suspension bags or commonly called airbags, not to be confused with the airbag that you may or may not have in your driver's seat in the case of a collision. These are, on an air ride bus, you'll have airbags here that lift the frame up off the suspension, off the axle. On other buses, this may be a leaf spring system, but my bus is air brakes, or sorry, my bus is an air suspension. So we check this bag to make sure that the rubber is in good shape. It's not cracked, frayed, or leaking. We'll check that leak a little bit more when we do our air, our air test. Further back here, we're continuing to look at all of our hoses and lines. I know that these are air conditioning lines here and that these lines are not leaking, they're not frayed, cracked, uh, and they look in good shape. This here, uh, my bus has a 100 gallon fuel tank that's center mounted uh, behind the rear axle. So we are looking at the fuel tank here and the fuel tank is not leaking. There's no signs of rust. There's no signs of structural damage to the frame that it rides on. And this fuel tank looks good. Inside the fuel door, we are looking to make sure that the fuel cap is present and snug. All right, coming back to our checklist, we have gone through the shock absorber and brake hose and fittings in the brake chamber. Uh, we will look at the slack adjusters as part of the brake system next. All right, for this item, we're looking at our slack adjusters. The slack adjuster is this arm here, and we need to make sure this has no more than one inch of play in it. Okay, moving forward, uh, the brake drum, brake linings. We need to make sure that the brake drum has no holes, cracks, or dents. It is a smooth surface and there's no signs of grease or oil. For the brake linings, we need to make sure that the shoes are sufficient and there is more than one quarter of an inch pad. No, again, no cracks, no chips, no fluid, grease, or oil. Here we are looking in at the brake drum and shoes and these all look pretty good from what we can see. Um, this bus does have the uh, dust guard on it, so it's a little hard to see, but you can kind of look inside the service hole, which you're not gonna see on the camera. We now, this whole area in here is covered in grease. I'm not sure if that's just legacy grease or if this is actually uh, leaking somewhere. We'll have to investigate that a little bit. All right, number 23, tires. This is a big one. The DOT specs require that we have four 30 seconds inch tread depth on our steer tires and two 30 seconds inch tread depth on our drive tires. There can be no cuts or bubbles on the sidewalls. We need to check the top of the tire for even wear. We need to check the tire pressure and we need to check that the valve stem is not cracked, broke, leaking, or twisted and is secured with a cap. Also, there is a requirement on commercial passenger vehicles that the front steer tires not be retreads. 
Now that's a requirement for commercial passenger vehicles. There is no federal requirement that I found uh, that says on a private bus, you cannot have recaps on the front. That's something for each owner to decide. If you want more information on tires, Ross, uh, his YouTube channel is called Rolling Living. He has a great video he made uh, talking about tires and I highly recommend checking that out. But for our requirements, we are going to do a quick inspection of the tire. These tools here, what we're going to use for this check. The first one is a depth gauge. You can get this online or at any auto parts store. And what this does is you stick this pin down into the tread of a tire and push down. And then, then this unit here at the top will tell you what your depth is. This gauge gives me both millimeters and if I flip it to the other side, 30 seconds of an inch, which is what we're looking for. So as long as we're above four on our steers and above two on our drive, we're good. For the air pressure you need a chuck that has both the front and rear check so we can check both the duals in the back and you need to make sure that your gauge is able to go up to at least 120 psi um, i run my bus tires at 105 psi cold that's based one on personal preference but two on the recommendations of the tire manufacturer so to check these we're going to take uh, first our gauge push the top all the way down we are going to fit this into the groove push this down flat pull it out and look at it and we can see that these tires are at about a 14 to 15 30 seconds uh, depth. We're required to have four so we're in good shape here. We're also going to check to make sure the tire is, we're going to feel across, make sure there's no worn spots and the tire is uh, wearing smoothly. And we will repeat this check on the front. Again we're going to push the thing down, we're going to set this in the tread push down till the little feet are snug on the tire, lift and read. And we can see here that we're at 15, 30 seconds. We're also going to inspect the tire for any signs of cracking, uh, looking for chips, any signs of wear that would indicate the tire is in need of being replaced. And this tire is in really good shape. Uh, in one of my videos when I first bought this bus, I talked about the fact that these tires are getting near the age out limit. That is a, again, there is no code or law that requires you to change a tire when it gets to a certain age. Uh, that's more of a personal preference thing. These tires are getting close to that seven, eight year age out limit, uh, but they are in overall good health yet. So I'm going to be keeping them on for the duration of my build. Next, we will check the air pressure. Now, one of the things I like to do on all of my buses is I install this digital TPM, tire pressure management system. And right now they're all showing as dashes because this, this bus hasn't moved for a while, so it's conserving battery. But this will get a remote reading from a sensor on each tire and report it back here so I can see my tire pressures in real time. However, for the sake of doing a proper inspection, you should still use a manual gauge and check your tire pressures uh, correctly. Now this is not something, because the TPMS gives me a good daily reading of what my tires are, I would not do a tire check every day, uh, but we'll do one now for the inspection. And like I said, every six months to a year when I do a full blown inspection, I would properly check this. So the way that TPMS works is this is a little battery powered sensor here that sits in place of the cap. So when I take this off, I can access the valve stem and check my tire pressure. And right now we are at just shy of 100 PSI. So this tire could use a little bit of air. While we're doing our inspection, we'll make sure that the valve stem is healthy. It's not bent or broken or leaking, looks good. And then now we're gonna screw my, either the ear cap or my TPMS sensor back on. And now that I've disconnected and reconnected that, I'm guessing the automatic gauge will come back up, which it did, which shows me 96, which is pretty close to what I am reading on my gauge. Okay, so off camera, I went around and did all six tires. Um, I didn't film each individual tire. That would get very repetitive. Number 24 and 25 also go to the wheels. Uh, so we were looking at the rim to make sure that there are no cracks. The rim is not rusting through and is not welded. Um, it's pretty rare to see somebody try to weld a rim together, um, but that is a major, major violation. You do not do that. With the lug nuts, we check to make sure that none are missing. They're not loose. There's no signs of rust trails and that there are no cracks or distortion from the lug nut bolt holes. So zoom out here, looking at our rim. There's no sign of rust through. There are no cracks. It has definitely not been welded. And we will check all of our lug nuts to make sure that they are all present and all tight. On a lot of buses, what you'll see is 
a lot of districts will put these little uh, reflective or yellow or orange little triangle pieces uh, between the wheel and the lug nut, and they put them in an arrow pattern pointing at each other. And the idea is that when, when the driver does their daily pre-check inspection, they don't have to bend down here and, and, and grab every lug nut to make sure it's secure. If one of those arrows has moved, then the lug nut has come loose, and that's kind of their uh, visual indicator. I will probably not put them on this bus. I think they look kind of ugly, and I don't mind coming around and manually checking them uh, during my inspections. Okay, number 26, the wheel seal. We want to make sure it's not leaking, not loose or missing bolts, and that has the proper fluid level if there is a sight glass. Uh, so this is more prevalent on this tire style on the front rim. The rear ones are sealed a little bit harder to look on this type of bus, but this is what we're looking for. The wheel seal is not leaking. There's no grease or oil coming out of here. And this does not have the sight glass. I will be replacing this hub uh, with one that has a sight glass. But to check it, we would pull this plug out and look inside to make sure that there is enough gear oil in there. I'm not gonna do that for right now because this cap is uh, in pretty bad shape and I'm afraid it may disintegrate on me. This is definitely Arizona dry rot. So like I said, I'm gonna be replacing this hub with one that's got a visual indicator on it anyway, so I'm not gonna open it up right now. Okay, now we get to the side of cab items. Number 27, we're gonna look at the door and make sure that the door hinges are secure, the bolts are tight, the handle works, no damage to the side, the seal is intact and it's not torn and the door opens and closes properly. While we're up there, we will also look at the mirror and make sure it's securely mounted, that the brackets are not damaged and bolted in place and the mirror is not broken and clean. So let's take a look at our door and mirrors. I'm going to be redoing this door anyway. You still wanna make sure that the door is snug on there, it seals up tight, none of your seals are broken and the door functions properly. And our mirrors are, all snug and we can climb up there and check that our bolts are tight this thing does not move and that the glass is intact and again we would do that on the driver's side as well okay under vehicle we already did this uh, that's our exhaust system, our frame, and our drive shaft. We checked those when we were under there a little bit ago. The rear axle, uh, the springs, make sure none of them are broken, they're all alignment and not shifted. We checked that under there. Underneath there, we also checked our U-bolts and our spring mounts. We checked our brake hoses and brake fittings. We checked the brake chamber and the slack adjuster. Okay, next section, cab compartment and engine start. This bus, with being an automatic, does not have a clutch, so we don't have to worry about that. We will check our temperature gauge, voltmeter, oil meter when we start the bus. We will check our air gauges and steering play. So at this point, we are ready to start the bus. Uh, because I keep this thing on a battery tender, the first thing we need to make sure we, we do is turn off that battery tender. And that happens to be this red plug here, so we'll just shut that off. So let's go up there now and start the bus. Okay, we have the bus running. We are waiting for it to build air pressure for the air alarm to go off. What we are wanting to check on this portion, my bus has dual air gauges. A lot of buses will have a single air gauge with dual needles, but we want to make sure that our low pressure alarm shuts off at 60 PSI. In terms of our checklist, while we're waiting, we'll make sure our voltmeter is working, indicating that the alternator is charging at 14 volt, which is correct. Our fuel gauge works. Our oil pressure gauge works, and then we have oil pressure. And once we're up to temperature, we'll be able to see our water. We're also looking for any other indicator lights, including a check engine light. Uh, if you've watched my previous videos, you know that I have a bad emission sensor on this bus, therefore I have a check engine light that will be replaced, it's just not done yet. We're also checking to make sure that we have no more than 10 degrees or two inches of play in the steering wheel. This bus has about one inch of play. While we're waiting for air pressure to build to check our other brake items, we will make sure that our windshield is clean, does not have any cracks, chips, stickers, and that the seal is secure with no leaks. Our windshield is most definitely not clean, but the glass is not broken or chipped and the seal is good. Again, we're checking our mirrors, no stickers, and that the mirrors are adjusted and clean. Check and check. Lighting indicators. We will check our left and right turn signals, our four-way flashers, and our high and low beams. We will turn on the hazards. And then we will go out and do a visual inspection. Left one blinking. Right one blinking. Side indicator lamp blinking. Need to make sure we close our fuel door. and both left and right blinking. We will repeat that with both the left and right turn lamps uh, accordingly. 
Next we will test our headlights as well as our brake lamps. So we'll turn on the headlights on this bus that switches down here. Make sure our dash lights up. And to check our brake lamps, because I'm by myself and I don't have somebody else to do this, I'm just gonna take a piece of wood here, push in the brake pedal and wedge it in my seat. Now if we come out here, we see our headlights are working. And with the headlights on, we also get our clearance lamps on. On a lot of buses, the clearance lamps are on a separate switch in the driver's area. This particular bus there tied to the headlights, so I don't have to worry about that. And I look back here, and we can see that both of my brake lights are illuminated. On camera, they look yellow, but they are actually red. All right, back up in the cab, we'll remove our stick. I'm going to turn off our headlights so I don't forget to turn them off later. We'll check our horn. That works. Check our heaters to make sure that it is hot and we will check for vents. Uh, the main important one here is the defroster. So we will go and turn on our defroster. And then we will feel up here to make sure that there is warm air blowing, which the air is blowing, it's still cool because the engine is not up temperature yet, but the defroster does work. We will check our safety and emergency equipment. We will make sure we have a fire extinguisher that is mounted and charged and we will check to make sure we have our triangles and some spare fuses and breakers. I do not have spare fuses and spare fuses and breakers in this bus yet. Uh, I probably should put some in here, but they would normally uh, sit up in my glove box. This box here contains our triangles. This box has seen better days, but the triangles are here. And I have no fire extinguisher in this bus. Uh, usually it's mounted, depending on the year of your bus, in a panel overhead or over here, or sometimes behind the driver's seat. Um, it looks like it was taken out of this bus, so I need to get one in here. And then lastly, we will check our seat belt and make sure that it's not, not cut, frayed, or torn and securely is mounted at the seat, shoulder, and floor. So we are securely mounted. We come around back. It is securely mounted at the seat and again at the floor. And we will make sure it is in proper operating condition. You'll have to take my word for it that the seat belt does click into place and work correctly. I don't have a wide enough uh, camera angle lens to film myself doing that. All right, now the fun stuff. Now we're going to test our air brake system. So we need to make sure that when starting the bus, we build air pressure to 120 and that the governor cuts out or purges. So our air pressure is at 120 PSI on both tanks and it does purge. If I were to sit here quietly for a minute, uh, you could hear the, the purge come out of the back. Step two, we will turn off the engine and then turn the key to the on position. Okay, engine off, key on. Step number three, we will release the parking brake by pushing it in. Okay, step number four, we will apply the foot brake and keep pressure and listen. Applied for three minutes, applied for one minute, it cannot lose more than three pounds of air in a one minute. We must hold for the full time minute. Now this is for the CDL test, but what we wanna do is basically we're pushing in the brake pedal to make sure that we don't lose too much air pressure. That would indicate we have a leak in the brake system. So by releasing the parking brakes, you can see our air pressure has dropped to roughly 105 PSI. So we're gonna hold the brake in for one minute and make sure we don't lose more than three pounds. You can, so when I push the brake in, we lost a little bit of air pressure as the brakes, as the air filled the brake chambers. But now what we want to make sure is that we are not losing more than three pounds in the minute while I am holding the brake pedal in. And we'll hold that for a minute and make sure that we don't drop more than three pounds. Okay, it's been a minute. We have not, so this suction passes. After the leak test, we will say that the low air buzzer will come on at 60 PSI. So what we're going to do is we're going to pump the brakes now and drop the pressure in our tanks to 60 PSI, at which point our low air buzzer, or in this case, it's a chime on this bus, will activate. And there our alarm comes on. It's also good to note that you should uh, chalk your tires when you do this test. Okay, after checking the low air warning device, we will say that the parking brake will pop out at approximately 30 PSI and we will continue to pump the, front, the foot brake until our parking brake. So as soon as this hits about 30 PSI, that parking brake should engage.
There, you heard that click, the parking brake just popped out. And now, as a final test, we will make sure that we cannot disengage this while we're under 30 PSI, which we can't. Now, in an emergency, this is just good to know, if you really absolutely have to try to move the bus with low air pressure, um, you can push this in and hold it in um, and try to get yourself off to the side of the road in an emergency if you had to. But the automatic system is not going to let you just push that in and let it be. It's also good to know on some buses, depending on what the style is, you cannot release your parking brake unless you actually have your foot on the brake pedal. This bus does not have that safety feature, but I've owned buses that did. And then as a final test, we will restart the engine and make sure our air pressure builds back up and that the governor uh, uh, releases the air when it's supposed to. As we approach 120 PSI, if you listen carefully, you will hear the hiss as the governor uh, purge release runs. And there's our purge. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go outside the bus and we are going to uh, go around the engine compartment as well as the undercarriage and listen for air leaks. So this is going to be hard to hear. I can feel air moving, but that is because our fan is running. What I'm checking for is that around the air compressor and these fittings, I don't feel any air leaks here, and more importantly, I do not hear any air leaks. Because this bus has an air suspension, I do not want to crawl under this bus right now. It is fully aired up, which means those airbags we inspected earlier are fully inflated, which I will show you. As you may recall earlier, we inspected these airbags back here, which make up the air suspension. You can see that they're fully inflated now and that they uh, were listening for air leaks. Now, I am not going to crawl underneath this bus because this bus is aired up. The air suspension bags are full. If those bags were to burst or this bus were suddenly to lose air pressure, the frame would come down. And so I do not want to be underneath this bus and potentially get crushed unless I have previously jacked this up with a separate support. So while I go under here, I am listening and looking for signs of an air leak. Uh, I'm listening for a hissing sound, and I'm also looking for signs of dust blowing around or any sign that air is moving outside of these. Now I know this bus does not have any air leaks, but I'm still going to inspect it. So up in here, we're kind of looking at some of these valves and different lines, looking for dust or air moving around and listening for leaks. Now, one of the last things we do on, it's important to do on any bus, school bus, party bus, or RV conversion, it's gonna be a little hard for me to do here, is to make sure that everything is secure. So on a party bus, because we've ripped out the school bus seats and built our own bench seating, we would go around and check to make sure that all the seats are installed securely, none are moving around or nothing is broken loose. It's also important as a schoolie to do that to make sure that you know your refrigerator is anchored down and isn't gonna come flying out. And it's also a good time to make a checklist of things you need to do before moving the bus, like clearing your counters off, latching any uh, cupboard doors or drawers shut, and making sure that loose items are secured down. Now, obviously this bus is still under construction, so there's all kinds of loose stuff flying around in here uh, and really doesn't apply to the inspection for this video. But if I were to drive this bus home for the afternoon to work on, I would need to make sure that all this loose stuff is secured before I took off. Obviously in the condition that it's in, we're not going anywhere. Okay, so that completes our checklist for the CDL pre-trip. Um, which again covers most of the same items as our annual inspection would. You can see our annual inspection looks at our brake system. One thing that's included on here that's not in our uh, daily pre-check is coupling devices. This is designed more for semis where we're talking about fifth wheels and pintle hooks. But if you have a tow hitch on your bus and you're towing a car or a trailer, this would be a good time to go back there and check all that. I will have a tow hitch on this bus. I do not yet, so there's nothing to inspect at this point. But you can see that the annual inspection then looks at the exhaust system, which we already checked as well to make sure that, you know, when I was under there, we were looking to make sure that was all good. We look at the fuel system, lighting devices, safe loading. This is kind of that cab area where we're checking to make sure things are, you know, secured and not loose. We're looking at steering mechanism, suspension, frame tires, wheels and rims, uh, windshield glazing. And the only thing in here that we did not already check was the windshield wipers. That took me about an hour to do all of that. It's not that big of a deal. Now for a daily pre-trip, I wouldn't do all that. For a daily pre-trip, I generally do just a walk around. Uh, so I turn on all of the lights and check you know, my signals, uh, you know, hazards. I look at my 
uh, headlights and high beams. I check to make sure all my clearance lamps are working. Uh, I look, you know, I check my engine oil and transmission fluid, uh, which you did not see me check the transmission fluid. That's one of the checklist items that I should have done that didn't. Uh, but I would, I would check those fluids. I would look for any leaks under the bus. Uh, I check all my lamps and lenses. You know, I check my tire pressure. I kind of look to make sure my lug nuts are secure. I make sure I don't have any tire damage. I check to make sure my fuel cap is closed. And I, then I just kind of give the underside of the bus a, a generic look-see to make sure that I don't see any signs of anything bent or broken or damaged or leaking. Uh, and that's what I would do for a quick uh, pre-trip uh, every time I use the bus. So I hope you found this video helpful. Those are the inspections I do and when I do them. And a lot of these items are a good thing to look at, you know, if you're inspecting a bus before buying it. The one thing that's not on the checklist that I really look at closely when I'm buying a bus is, is rust. Once you already own the bus, whatever rust is happening, there's probably not much you can do about it. But if I'm buying a new bus, I am looking for rust and I try to buy buses from the South that do not have rust. So I hope you found this video helpful and I'll see you next time. Okay, I'm back in the truck. I'm just getting ready to head home and leave the shop. One thing I know I'm gonna get some flack on, so I wanted to mention it specifically. It is not a good idea to start your bus and let it just run at idle for five minutes in the shop like I did today for this inspection. It's actually better to let the buses just sit on a battery maintainer for months at a time than to start them and let them run for just five minutes. I do advocate starting your bus at least once a month, but you really need to start it, get it up to temperature, get it out in the road and get it moving uh, and let it run for at least 20 minutes under load and not just sit in idle in your shop. It's really not uh, good for the engine. For today's video, I wanted to get through that inspection, which required starting it to do the air brake test. Uh, and obviously with the windows out and a whole bunch of loose stuff floating around the back, I was not able to do a road test. So it, it's not going to hurt the engine to once in an extreme while start it and idle it for five minutes. Um, it, it's not terrible for the engine, but it's also not good to do that on a regular basis. So I wanted to make sure I was kind of clear about that point and that uh, today's uh, quick start in the shop was uh, an exception rather than the norm. So thanks.